Okay, good evening, Ma'am Elvia and friends. Today we are from group nine, which consists of me, Azura, and my friends, Sandrina and Ryu. We will discuss about the capital market research. This is our agenda for today. First, we will have an overview of the positive counting theory. Next, we'll discuss about the capital market research and efficient market hypothesis plus the explanation in KKPK. And then the impact of counting profit announcement and the factors affecting earnings response coefficient. And then the trading strategies and issues for auditors. And last but not least is our study case. Okay, first we'll discuss about the positive counting theory overview. As what we have learned in the previous chapter, positive counting theory will result, result in a prediction about uncounting phenomena, while the normative counting will result in a prescription. Uh, an example of positive counting theory is that an observation to explain why a, why a firm implement the same accounting policy year to year. Next is the strength of positive counting theory. Jensen said that in order to prescribe an appropriate accounting policy, it is necessary to know how the world actually operates. There are several dissatisfaction with the prescriptive standards. First, the, it is not capable of falsification. A hypothesis from a theory should be capable of falsification because it should be testable and realistic and they can be proven wrong, wrong if they are incorrect. Next, it do not explain and assess the current existing accounting practice. It is desirable to understand the current application of accounting practice rather than to make to extensively make a whole new standard change. A positive counting theory attempt to model the connection between accounting numbers, firms, and markets, and to analyze problem within an economic framework. Next. There are two stages of positive accounting theory development. The first is the capital market research. It investigates the connection between the announcement of an accounting data and the reaction of share price. This theory do not observe the assumption of an accounting number is the primary driver of share price. Hence, an accounting report may be useful to, to explain the manager's stewardship function. The theories incorporated in this is the efficient market hypothesis and capital asset pricing model. The next is the, to explain and predict accounting practices across firms. The first is exposed, which we have learned also learned in the previous chapter. In here, uh, the, the firm, even after they have contract, the manager still act in opportunistic behavior because they act in their own interest to transfer wealth to themselves. And the second is ex ante. In here, the managers and the owners sign up a contract that will benefit the efficiency of the firm and reduce cost of contracting between the managers and the owners. These two theories are not mutually exclusive. Next. Next, we'll discuss about the capital market research and efficient market hypothesis plus the explanation in KKPK. Okay, so uh, there are two types of capital market research. First is the impact of accounting information release to the share return. And second is the impact of accounting policy changes to share price. Both is conducted with an efficient market hypothesis. An efficient market is when a share price fully reflects the available information under the assumption of first, no transaction cost. Second, all information is available cost-free to all participants. And last, there is an agreement on application of current information for current and future prices. However, we are aware that these assumptions are not satisfied in any market. Hence, there are three market efficiency form based on different information sets. First is the weak form. In here, the prices fully reflects the information contained in its sequence of base prices. So the investor won't be profit if they study the price patterns. Next is the semi-strong form. In here, prices fully reflects all publicly available information plus the information of past prices. So 
the investor won't be profit if they only study the public information and the past pattern. They also need uh, another information. This form is the most related to accounting research because accounting information is one of the publicly available information by the firm. The last one is the strong form. In here, prices fully reflects all the information, including the information that is not publicly available, or we can call it as insider information. Next. Next, the capital market research and in efficiency market hypothesis, it does not, it does not suggest that all financial information has been correctly presented by a firm or properly interpreted by the investors. Hence, it says that market price are a fair game because even if the market is not perfect, it still responds to an information. Next, in the capital market research, it also used the market model that derives from capital asset pricing model. The market model used to estimate the unexpected or abnormal return on the shares of a company at the time of an event occurring, for example, a profit announcement. In here, we we illustrate the formula. The first is the raw return of firm I in period of T is equal to the constant average return, regardless of the return on the market, plus the return due to market moves. The beta is the sensitivity of a firm to the return on the market, and also the R is the return on the market, plus the return due to firm news. news this is the abnormal returns. This is the readable error in period T, the portion of the return due to firm unique events, for example, like the dividend announcement or management policy. This market model is under the assumptions that investors are risk averse, returns are normally distributed, investors have homogeneous expectation, and markets are complete, means there are no taxes or there are no transactional costs. This market model captured that the total return is attributable to firm specific factors and not to market factors. Next. Next is the explanation in KKPK. We found that in chapter two, the characteristic of a useful information in paragraph 41. There stated that the more efficient functioning of capital market, is the result from uh, a better decision from the users that results from a relevant and faithful representative financial information. And it also and it also results in a lower cost of capital. The investors, lenders, and other creditors are benefit by making better information decision because the, the information is more relevant and faithfully representative. In the paragraph 42, the standard setters or the one standard accountancy keuangan, it assesses that the benefit of reporting certain information need to be balanced with the cost incurred to provide and use the information. So they apply the cost constraint. And when they apply the cost constraint, they also seek information from the information providers, users, auditors, academics, and others regarding the expected benefit and costs in the standards. Next. To wrap things up, here we state the four indicators for market efficiency. First is the release of information will be responded immediately. People will fully use the information released and there is an unbiased man manner. And last, it depends on the market efficiency form, whether it's a weak form, semi-strong or strong form. Next, Sandrina will explain the impact of accounting profit announcement. Next slide, please. Um, so when a company decided to announce new report to the public, for example, uh, annual report, the situation in the market as a stakeholder will adjust accordingly. And uh, in this case, um, Ray Ball and Philip already made uh, or conducted an, an experiment in 1968 to see the usefulness of the information contained in profit figure announcement. They argued that the usefulness of the information should result in the share price adjusting and reflecting the new information.
And from that uh, observation, it can be concluded that market uh, reaction can be separated into three. The first one is a good reaction, a bad reaction, and no reaction from them. So in good reaction, uh, it is when the information announced exceed the expectation of the market and it results in higher share price. For bad reaction, the information announced is lower than market expectation resulting in lower share price. Uh, and lastly, when there are no reaction by, by the market, it is usually affected by several factors. The first one could be that the market is inefficient. The second one is leak information, as we know that the market is very dynamic and company is not the only source of uh, information to the market. The third one is irrelevant information. Uh, for example, the market is very um, concerned about cash flow, but the um, company just announced about their profit for the year so the information is not exactly what the um what the market is looking for the fourth one is good news and bad news compensating each other's effect next slide and here we have another uh, notable rising from ball and brown's observation the first one is that um there is a continuous release of information to the market in terms of both accounting and non-accounting format. And in this case, the release of information can come from a quarterly report. And also um, prior to the announcement, uh, prior to the announcement date, uh, the market can keep adjusting to that information. And also the second one is that market is consistent in anticipating information in accounting reports, which is why adjustment is constantly taking place. Next slide. Uh, the next uh, is about magnitude. So for example, uh, uh, in profit announcement, uh, they also take effect uh, magnitude also take effect to the adjustment of share price in the case that um, for example, in the uh, investigation done by Beaver, Clark, and Wright, they revealed a strong correlation between magnitude of abnormal returns and the magnitude of unexpected profit. Uh, however, in this case, uh, the concept also relies heavily on the sensitivity level, which may differ in every company in different industries. The next impact correlates with the information asymmetry caused by firm size. Firstly, it is argued that the smaller firm, the smaller the firm, the more um, information is contained on their accounting reports. In other words, it is uh, negatively correlated and it is caused by several factors such as the high search costs in large firms. And this may be associated with the concept of uh, information overload as the larger firms are more exposed and they have a lot of information about them that is made public by a lot of different resources. And in this case, the public need an extra effort to find the most relevant information that they can use to make decision. And for smaller firms, uh, they are usually less stable than the bigger ones. And the effect of accounting reports release is usually more significant to them uh, which is why it is generally more important for the smaller ones than the bigger ones. However, we may also see that there are several things that may compensate the high search costs in larger company. Uh, for example, the first one is that larger firms provide greater variety of information than smaller firms. Uh, and we can see this uh, in a sense that financial analysts uh, spend more time concentrating on, on larger firms than the smaller ones. Next is that larger firms have higher degree of exposure by constant reporting in the financial statement. As I have mentioned before, that they, uh, some of them do not only um, announce annual report, they also announce a quarterly or semi-annual report. And because they have more incentive to announce or release information frequently, they have a higher degree, degree of exposure. And we can conclude that the degree of firm security price change associated with a profit announcement is inversely related to the firm size. Next slide. Uh, next is about the magnitude of profit release from other firms because uh, business environment is very uh, dynamic and very interrelated to each other. 
the profit of other business and other industry can make an impact also because the scope is bigger and um, involve a lot more companies. Timing has become more significant in the sense that uh, the first company to release or to make an announcement is usually the ones that contain the most information to the public. And on the contrary, the last firm to announce would have the least impact on their share price as most of the uh, information that they release is already made known by the previous firms that announced. And the association between a late announcers price reaction and early announcers news was strongest for those industries with highest profit correlation. And the next one is about volatility. The more information is contained in the profit announcement, the larger change, uh, price change would take place during the announcement date. And as I have said before, that the smaller firms experience greater variance of, an, of abnormal returns than larger firms because they are um, more prone to these changes. And that because there is abnormal volatility in return on or about profit announcement date. So we can see that the volatility is even more significant in the market with less information flow, or we can also say the smaller firms. Next slide. Uh, so next is about uh, association studies and earnings response coefficient. Association studies is conducted to measure the impact of accounting profit on shares over a longer period of time. It is usually one year or longer. And um, from that studies, uh, it is have been made known that competing sources of information preempted the information in annual profits by about 70 to 85 percent. Hence, the annual accounting figure is not a timely figure. And uh, we can see that ERC is, is obtained by running an ordinary least squares regression. Next slide. Next, I'll be talking about the factors uh, affecting ERC. Next. So there are in total eight factors affecting ERC. And the first one is risk and uncertainty in which I will explain uh, the impact of each component separately. Firstly, uh, risk, they negatively affect ERC as follows because risk, uh, when risk increase, the discount rate will also increase and it will therefore uh, decrease the discounted uh, present value of the future profit. Hence, the ERC will also get lower. In the case of uncertainty, uh, it is they also impact ERC uh, negatively. However, it is more indirect effect as we can see that they can either impact the future economic profit or the discount rate, in which both of them uh, result in a negative ERC or lower ERC. For audit quality, uh, audit quality uh, basically holds a really significant impact on the confidence level that the public holds against the company. And the higher the quality of the audit, the higher the ERC as well. However, we should also uh, we should also take note that the audit quality can also be related to the um, size of the audit firm and also how well known they are and how how prestige they are in the industry. Next slide. So for uh, the next factor, which is industry, firms within a particular industry face similar factors and product markets and results in a more homogeneous outcome uncertainty that firm uh, in other in that firm in other industries uh, we can also say that industries with the greatest homogeneous outcome uncertainty would have the greatest ERCs and the next one is about interest rates there is a negative temporal correlation between risk free interest rates and ERC uh, and the, the term temporal is because it is with assumption that inflation does not, uh, is not reflected in higher price charged by the company to the customers. Next is about financial leverage. Uh, we can see that uh, they have a negative correlation and it can be explained with three theory. The first one is default theory in which the increase of financial leverage result in the fall of firm value and profit will have less information for prices 
and hence in this case ERC will decrease. The second one is about maximum debt in which the increase of financial leverage result in share price increase because of lower uh, WACC or increase in management's confidence which creates positive signal to the investors. The second, the, the third one is about optimal leverage and it comes with the assumption that there is ideal financial leverage for each firm uh, and in the case that the firm surpass that ideal level of debt, ERC will be lower. Next slide. Uh, next factor is firm growth, in which the growth uh, positively affect ERC, and it can come in several conditions. For example, um, project that the company is currently uh, operating, and also opportunities to invest uh, in the future. Next is uh, permanent and temporary profit factor. There is a positive relationship between the size of the revision to uh, expected permanent profit and ERC. In this case, the investors will analyze how much of the unexpected profit will be permanent, and um, this will uh, impact their decision-making for investing in the company. Uh, the last one is non-linear model. A non-linear relationship rests on the premise that the absolute value of unexpected profit is negatively correlated with profit persistence. As the surprise in profit increases, the likelihood that the profit surprise is permanent will decrease. Next. The next concept about trading uh, strategies will be taken over by my friend Ryu. Thank you. So in trading, uh, it's an activities that were being done by the market users or the people in the market where they buy or sell securities, which will result in a profits or returns. And based on empirical studies, we have few phenomena that are interesting. So let's, like, let's take a look on it. Uh, the first one is the post announcement drift. So uh, this phenomenon occurs where abnormal return continue after profit announcement so that the information content of the profit announcement is not fully incorporated into the share price at the announcement date. Thus, abnormal returns can be earned by trading on accounting information that is already public. So if we see in the graph on the right side, we could see that when uh, the company announced some information, for example, earnings, in the first day of the information uh, being exposed, we could see that the share price is um, affected. So for example, the red line, if the market react positively, the share will uh, increase, the share price will increase, but it's not stop only for a day, but it will increase in a period of time. For example, four weeks or maybe five weeks. So that's the concept behind post announcement drift. So Ball in 1968 has commented, it is the most significant anomalies in financial markets because first the magnitude is daunting. That means that uh, it exceeds the normal return on the market if you use these strategies. The second one, it is ubiquitous. Why? Because earnings uh, information were being exposed by the company not only once a year, but four times a year because we have quarterly financial reports, right? So it is at uh, a period is more often. Third one is scientifically indisputable because after 30 years experimenting, it's uh, the this phenomenon always happening. The fourth one, it implies that share markets fail the task of competitive economic theory, and it challenges the theory underlying most of widely used models in, model, in modern financial economies. Because like if we see that the market does not align the price in a short period of time, it means that the market is not uh, super efficient, but they have to, um, to align it in in, in more than a few weeks. So it's not a short time, but more long, longer uh, time period. So information for, from firms owners and or managers and financial analysts about first prospects reflect their optimism and that the market behave naively uh, in that it takes the optimistic forecasts at face value. The second phenomenon, we have the winners, losers, and overconfidence. The concept is uh, like this. Past winners tend to be future losers and vice versa. 
And the Bong and Feller said that 15% of abnormal return can be made from this strategy. So if we see the graph, that means that the price of shares in certain industries uh, tend to move volatility, uh, volatility. Like uh, for, uh, they don't, they don't like to move in a straight line, like in a trend, but they move up and down and up and down. So for example, in, at first we see that um, a certain industries have this hype or this uh, fat that is going, going on so that the price is increasing and increasing and increasing to a certain point. And then uh, they go back to the mean or reverse to the mean and they uh, become the industries that going down compared to the other industries. Uh, so it means that uh, each industries have this volatility, but actually they want, uh, if, if we, if we uh, draw a regression line, it's like a flat line that, that located in between all the up and downs. So this long-term return reversals are due to overconfidence and biased self-attribution. Investors are hypothesized to give too much weight to the past profit performance of firms. Uh, that is to say extrapolating and too little to the fact that performance tends to mean revert. Like um, I think the easiest example is when COVID started to uh, happen back in March. Um, the technology company in uh, Indonesia have this a uh, booming cycle or like they tend to move a lot more like a thousand or two thousand percent um, increase the, their price but it's 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 like uh, so it's like we in this graph we could uh, think that as a upside upside hill but in a certain point they will go down they will revert to the mid the next uh we have two types of a hypothesis. The first is mechanistic and the second one is no effect hypothesis. So mechanistic hypothesis is when the market reacts mechanistically to changes in accounting numbers, regardless of whether they are cosmetic or whether they have cash flow implications. And no effect hypothesis, uh, this is the hypothesis that derived from the efficient market hypothesis. And it states that the market ignores accounting changes which have no cash flow consequences. No abnormal returns when there is a cosmetic change in accounting policy since creative accounting change is understood by market participants. So what happens is that uh, managers try to uh, sometimes use some accounting estimates that are uh, managed to inflate or deflate the earnings, for example. So in the effect uh, hypothesis, uh, it argues that all users or, or all uh, investors in the market, they have, uh, they have enough knowledge to know about this kind of practices, so they will not get deceived by the company. But um, on the other hand, mechanistic hypothesis said that sometimes the users will get deceived so that the cosmetic uh, type of earnings uh, information uh, will have that have no cash flow implications. We will have a significant effect to the price of the company shares. So Sloan said that market as a whole does not have a sophisticated understanding of accruals and hence overreacts to positive income increasing accruals. We could see that the managers uh, in exposing their income sometimes could be um, affected by opportunistic perspective and also informational perspective. In opportunistic per perspective, uh, they tend to do fraud, for example, or industry regulations to receive certain subsidies or equity offerings when they want to make um, their company become public, they tend to um, like gloss or make the financial statements better, so it will become attractive. Or debt covenants, for example, they will uh, reduce the debt equity or debt asset ratio, so it seems that the company is solvent. And also like management compensation, if the manager will get bonus for uh, better profits. 
On the other side, we have informational perspective where um, it is derived from signaling. It is like the practice that the managers use to indicate that the or want to signal about economic information that the company is uh, experiencing. We move on to the last section. It is issues for auditors. So like what uh, Sandrina had mentioned, um, quality or qual uh, quality of audit reports and the quality of the firms conducting an audit is also affecting, affecting the quality of the company itself. So like qualified audit reports and SEC sanctions against auditors will signal lower quality earnings and result in lower ERCs. Uh, big auditors are higher with higher quality than other auditors. Uh, and Mansi, Maxwell, and Miller provide evidence that higher quality auditing lowers the cost of debt capital. Higher quality auditors are associated with higher quality financing information and that the larger auditor provides greater insurance against that default. So higher quality auditing, for example, the big four, if the big four audit a certain companies, the investors that will, um, that will invest in equity or will um, make a debt for that company feel more secure or insured by the quality of the audit firms. But like uh, this is, this, these two are the examples of catastrophes affecting clients' share prices. When uh, Leventhal and Howard, like the set, uh, big seven firms, uh, went bankrupt, and also Arthur Anderson went bankrupt in 2002, that their clients' uh, company price also get affected by it and become a uh, lot cheaper. Evidence from archival data that a client using a larger auditor is likely to have a lower cost of capital could be explained in three different ways. First, investor value either the quality of the audit work and or the insurance protection provided by the large auditor and therefore pay more for shares or charge lower interest for uh, debt. The company is perceived as being a good investment for other reasons and the economic benefits from lower cost of capital enable managers to pay the higher fees charged by a large auditor. And third, the auditor choice and cost of capital could both be caused by other factors, such as the quality of the company's management or investment opportunities. We move on to the case study. Let me read it for you. So outgoing Westpac chief David Morgan yesterday delivered his final annual result for the group a bumper bottom line harvest of $3.45 billion. Net profit was up 12.4% for the year following spectacular growth in fee income businesses, particularly funds management and institutional banking. Dr. Morgan, who makes way for incoming managing director Gail Kelly in February, described the 2007 earnings performance as one of the best in his nine years at the group's helm. I think we've got enormous growth ahead of us, he said. I've never seen a momentum in the company as we have now. Investors responded positively to the profit announcement, driving up the share price by 52 a cent to a record close of $31.06. And the question is, using the material provided in this chapter, provide an explanation of why the capital market responded as positively as it did to Westpac's profit announcement. Next, uh, Azura will try to answer uh, the case discussion. Okay, thank you, Ryu. So from our analysis, we think that the increase in share price of Westpac is caused by a profit announcement information that exceeds the expectation of the market because due to four factors. The first factor is lower market expectation. So seeing that the response of the market is generally positive to the profit announcement, we can say that it is because the market probably didn't anticipate this. The market may be expected that the company will have a profit increase less than 12.4% or even didn't have a point increase or even to incur a loss. The next factors will be explained by my friends Andrina and Ryu. So for the second factor, which is signaling, we can see that um, from the statement made by the uh, director and the chief of Westpac, 
Um, the first one is that I think we have got enormous growth ahead of us. And also uh, because their director claim that their current earning is one of the best um uh, uh, from the previous year, it has been proven that uh, this statement is reflect uh, has reflected their um, confidence in the um, performance of the company, and because of because of this uh, good expectation regarding the future of the company, it has been signaled um, positively to assist the decision making of the current or future investors. Next, um, the the next two, the last two factors will be um, explained by my friend Ryu. The third factor is the market is uh, efficient. It is because the market could respond in such a fast movement toward the news and or information. We are driving up uh, the share price to close at thirty one dollar. And the last one is, it's based on mechanistic hypothesis. Uh, since the information is only about earnings and not about cash flow. Uh, we could not be sure whether the fee income increase uh, derived from accounting changes or it is uh, really have an, uh, a significant impact in the uh, cash flow position. So um, maybe it could be derived uh, by mechanistic uh, hypothesis. That is all for, from our group. Um, thank you for listening to our presentation. And this is our reverence. Okay. We wish you all good luck.